Sheridan student section who are out in full force tonight bearing all the conditions for the Sheridan Tri-Valley game. It's an intense one out there. We'll have all that in Gridiron Glory and the final eight that they're a part of with the student section showdown coming up next. So get ready because Gridiron Glory starts right now. <laughs> right there to signify the kickoff to the 2021 Ohio High School Football Playoffs. Get ready because we'll have all of these recaps and more coming up next. So get ready because Grand Glory starts right now. An ordinance authorizing the hire of a new Arts, Parks and Recreation Director has been approved. The new hire is Catherine Ann Jordan. Ann Jordan is a visiting professor for the Patton College of Education at Ohio University and has a PhD in Parks, Recreation and Tourism. The hiring also comes with a 34% pay increase that will bring the director's salary to $68,000. Arian Smelly was the only council member to vote against the ordinance, setting concerns of financial struggles with this department. The ordinance ended up being approved on a 6-1 to one vote. Reporting live in the studio, I'm Nick Veland. The City of Athens could see more regulations surrounding Airbnb-type rentals in town. A permit would now be required for those wanting to have any kind of short-term rentals. If discussions at city, yesterday's City Council turned into an ordinance. If implemented, it would require inspections like those that are already in place with long-term rentals and put the transient guest tax in place for hotels to be collected. A public forum on the proposal is scheduled for November 22nd in Athens City Council Chambers. The Athens City Council held a meeting yesterday that took quite a volatile turn. I have Nick Veland joining us outside of the city building to discuss what happened last night. Yeah, Curtis, it was all business as usual until the citizens had their opportunity to speak. That citizen that did sp speak up was independent city council candidate Damon Crane. He called out two city council members in particular, Michael McCary and Ben Ziff. He kind of told that they were appointed on tokenism and that that was not fair that they got their seats on the council because of that. Of that, that I don't need to really entertain anyone's concerns that I'm a token. Um, and it's really the contributions I'll make over my new two-year term will demonstrate just how valuable the diversity that I'll bring is, but also I'm committed to making sure I'm not the last uh, uh, appointment. So Nick, what was McCary's initial reactions to these accusations? Council meeting, kind of the chance to talk to him. We didn't really raise these concerns initially, but then today, when I got the chance to speak with him, he was more open about it and a lot more confident, as you can tell from his statement. We now narrow down our Player of the Year candidates even more. Here are the final five players that are fighting for our Player of the Year. Our first player is Waterford's Holden Daly. We'll have more on Daly and the Wildcats' playoff run later on in the show. Next up is Jason Munyan from Sheridan. His career is over, but not before he broke almost every Sheridan rushing record. Our third finalist is Will Futhi from Waverly. We'll see if Futhi and the Tigers can get revenge against Clinton Massey later on in the show. Fourth is Levi Gullion from Piketon. Gullion is already at more than 50 total touchdowns this season. Our last final is Carson Crouch from Granville. A sad way for his season to end last week with a torn ACL, but Crouch was terrific for the Blue Aces. Voting for the Player of the Year starts at midnight on WEB.org slash gridiron. Go cast your vote for who you think should win Gridiron Glory. Here's what plans to be passed at Monday's council meeting. Growing concern over Athens County's rising cases will bring an indoor mask mandate to Monday's agenda. Mayor C. Patterson hopes to move the proposed ordinance along quickly. Likely seek suspension of the rules to get it passed and out there. And again, what it will mean is that both vaccinated and unvaccinated people will be required to wear a face covering when entering into places open to the public. Recently passed Senate Bill 22 in Ohio wouldn't allow health organizations to require mass mandates. Bathens law director says the city can. So we as a statutory city certainly can examine uh, what's going on in our city and make a decision as to the public health and safety of the city's residents. If the ordinance passes, Athens City Council member and Donkey Coffee manager Ben Ziff says customers will have to abide by the new rules. I mean, if you don't have one on, you can't come in. I mean, that's kind of, that's all, that's all there is to it, realistically. Uh, and I'm sure we're going to get some people who are upset about that. 
um, and I will be as kind as I can possibly be, but um, if you don't have one on, you can't come in. And that's, that's the way that, that the language in the bill reads as of now, so that's what we're gonna be saying. Athens previously lifted its mask mandate for vaccinated individuals in May, but if passed, this amendment will now cover everyone. A new pop-up coffee shop in Athens has hit the streets. Here's more on how the business looks to promote bringing people together coming out of the pandemic. Tucked away in front of a fraternity house on College Street sits, at least for now, Jukebox Java. But for Sean Smothers, his table with its iced coffee and flavored syrups is something more. I'm not just selling coffee, I'm making friends, so it's good. Sean thinks that given this past year and a half of the lockdowns, social isolation, and uncertainty about the future, people could use a little pick-me-up. Come back to life, start talking to each other again, um, start looking at the people around you that you love and just appreciate every single phase in your life. A way to reconnect with each other, to get to know one another, to talk with each other. That's the goal here. How you doing? I'm doing all right myself. Um, honestly, it's an amazing day. I really can't complain. And one of those ways he tries to get people talking is with these labels he adds to every cup, each containing the name of a song for people to go listen to. I want people to buy a cup of coffee and look <clears throat> at the other Jukebox Java cups around them and think we have some sort of community here. We have some camaraderie and we can talk about music and we can talk about the things that matter. Coffee, conversation, and community. A mix Sean hopes will help make the world just a little bit sweeter. Some others also mentioned a promotion he's looking to do where the first coffee of the day is free. All you have to do is answer a question about bettering yourself. Live at the studio, I'm Nick Veland. New ideas became inspirations throughout the pandemic. In Athens, a local business came to life to bring the joy of going to a coffee shop to your front door. Sunday mornings are normally meant for sleeping in. But not for 26-year-old Daniel Palmer. Wake up around 7, 6.50, 7 o'clock in the morning on Sunday morning, and then brew the coffee, and then out the door by 8. From there, he travels throughout the city of Athens to get his customers a homemade muffin and a hot coffee. The simple idea came to him during the pandemic. And I missed donkey coffee. Uh, so I tweeted them, and I'm like, hey, you guys should do a like a delivery service where like you can subscribe for a muffin and a coffee in the morning. When no one else took it up, Palmer took matters into his own hands, creating Cafe Doorstep. Now Palmer's weekends revolve around the business, from sending out the payment request on Friday to getting the pastry prepared on Saturday afternoon in his home kitchen. Palmer said that the profit margins for the business are small, but his love for coffee keeps the business going. And he hopes this is a step towards something bigger. It's never been like, a dream to be a baker or open a bakery, but I have had dreams of like wanting to open a cafe, and so this is like a step in that direction, I guess. <laughs> For Newswatch, I'm Nick Veland in Athens. You can find more information on Cafe Doorstep online or on Instagram.